Sport. My name is Sasha. I am 15 years old and I'm from France. Thank you for joining us for the UTS World Visual Youth Festival 2020 Educational Panel. We are here today to talk about Olympic Truth, Sport Towards Peace Promotion. Dear guests, my name is Lilia. I'm 17 years old and I'm from France. For today's session, Olympic Truth, Sport Towards Peace Promotion, please welcome Mohamed Al Arabiat from Saudi Arabia, James Young from South Sudan, Dr. Chung Won Chu from Korea and Marius Vizer from Romania. It is my honor to introduce Julia Govenden, who is the CEO of United Through Sports and is a driving force at the heart of this festival. Mrs. Govenden will set the scene of this panel today.
Thank you, Julia. It is always a pleasure for us to hear you speak from the heart and with so much passion. I would now like to welcome the first panel speaker, Mr. Mohamed Arabiat. Dr. Arabiat, you are definitely the picture of a healthy body and a healthy mind. We have been informed you start every day with a workout. As the president of Generation for Peace, founded by His Royal Highness Prince Faisal Al Ansin, Generation for Peace is the world's second leading peace-building NGO working to transform conflict and inspire peace. What activities and strategies has Generation for Peace employed, and how could they be applied to dismantle the current global landscape of extremities? Well, first of all, let me thank you and also thank UTS for organizing this important event. And hats off to Stefan and Julia for pulling off yet another successful festival during those challenging times. And yes, I am religiously committed to working out. In many ways, it is what keeps me sane and grounded. It is one of those kinds of good routines that you want to maintain. And trust me when I say it is a constant that one needs, especially during such times where uncertainty is almost the only constant. Generations for Peace, as you mentioned, was founded in 2007 by His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin al-Hussein as a tribute to the legacy of our late king, his father, King Hussein, who made peace his lifelong mission. Focusing on your question, dismantling the current global landscape of extremities requires a paradigm shift and an understanding that we are only as strong and resilient as the weakest and the most vulnerable amongst us, be those individuals, organizations, and even states or nations. In these times of wars, division, polarization, and separation, the rise of extremism, and the exacerbation of those issues by the COVID-19 pandemic, we must strengthen our belief in the vital importance of building bridges, of facilitating ways to bring people together across conflict and identity divides, to support interreligious and intercultural dialogue, and to foster tolerance and understanding of diversity as a strength. In today's world, promoting intercultural dialogue and such understanding is more important than ever. It is essential for social, political, and economic development. The roots of conflict might differ from one context to another, yet the violent expressions of those conflicts are eerily similar. In the cost we pay in lives lost, dreams shattered, and opportunities missed, both socially and economically, the cost of violence and conflict is unsurmountable, yet we collectively fail to see the value of investing more in upstream preventing, prevention, peace-building efforts. We also at GFP see the pandemic as a stress test for all human systems, which is showing up glaring deficiencies in many of our systems at international, national, subnational, community, and even at the household level. We must not return to normal. There is a sense of urgency that we must learn from this to strengthen our systems to be more resilient, equitable, and effective to address the far larger challenges of the climate emergency and its intersectionality with peace building and other human development aspirations such as the SDGs. The new peace building context of COVID-19 makes it more urgent than ever to support stronger social cohesion and youth leadership to address both pre-existing and continuously changing needs. Dr. Rabiat. Generation for Peace works with empowering leaders of youth to promote active tolerance and responsible citizenship in communities experiencing different forms of conflict and violence. What do you feel we need to be focusing on teaching children and how can we do this? Well, for Generations for Peace, peace building is about supporting people in communities to address local issues of conflict and violence that they are passionate about changing part of their everyday lived experience. This includes different forms of direct violence, but also structural and cultural violence. Our work spans identity-related conflicts like inter-ethnic, inter-religious, inter-tribal violence, gang cultures, politically and ideologically motivated violence, and violent extremism, as well as gender-based violence, 
and discrimination against persons with disabilities or exclusion of minorities such as internally displaced people or refugees. We always work through strong existing structures in communities. Often, these are schools or youth centers, local civil society organizations or sports clubs. Our entire approach is grounded in methods to include community members directly in conflict analysis and community assessments and in program design implementation, monitoring and impact evaluation so that it is communities themselves who articulate in their own words the change they want to see and even indicators of outcomes and impacts they will measure collecting numerical data and stories of change so the sense making is relevant and owned by the community here i must say that for the sake of our shared destiny we must invest more in our communities to build social capital and to do so we must find innovative ways to face the challenges of multiculturalism of a generation of disaffected youth who feel disconnected from their communities of societies in which certain groups feel excluded whether they are ethnic religious or other minorities people with a disability or girls and women in communities social exclusion leads to conflict and violence and is a barrier to development social inclusion must be our common goal. On the opportunity side from the COVID-19 crisis, we can see that subnational structures and youth engagement can be harnessed to support the national response and recovery efforts. And youth can play an important role in connecting and engaging community institutions to strengthen resilience and security, simultaneously giving governments the opportunity to transform youth-state relations tackle political, economic, and social tensions, and minimize the appeal of violent extremist organizations. Youth are often the most active in local engagement in cases of crisis, showing resilience through resourcefulness, creativity, and know-how. But here, let me pause and talk about the concept of resilience and what it shouldn't mean for us. Resilience is not simply about the ability to survive or withstand crisis. Resilience is not only about being immune to violent extremist ideologies. Resilience is not about being static. It's about the ability to adapt and change. It's about challenging the status quo and understanding the systems that maintain it and reproduce it. Strong communities and young people's involvement in associations can also build their social capital and sense of belonging and empowerment, providing them with the confidence and skills to become important drivers and agents of change. We are all in this together as global citizens. And if we pull together to invest more in young people and in peace building, then we can unlock the enormous potential of youth and positive peace dividend for communities here in the Middle East and all around the world. Mr. Rabia, you have raised many interesting and important points. Thank you. Now, I would like to introduce Mr. James Young. James. James, you were one of the 10 athletes who joined the first ever IOC refugee team at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. How did or how does it feel to radically change your life circumstance from one of war to one that is so different? Uh, yes, um, first of all, I want to say thank you to the IOC to give me this chance again to uh, to share my, my experience back in Rio. Uh, for me, personally, it was very important uh, for me being in Olympic because it was something that I have never dreamed of before. And I never knew that maybe refugees can be recognized by the world to, to maybe to participate in a, such a big event like Olympic. Um, uh, it was a great, uh, great uh, moment whereby we got that experience uh, in Rio. We got uh, good ideas from, from uh, many athletes uh, who, who, who are in Rio with us, uh, top athletes in the world. They, they give us that uh, encouragement and we got that experience through them also. Um, it was something good that the sport uh, bring us together as the refugees and the 
press of the of the athletes around the world. Uh, even that time, we we feel confident that uh, you know now being in Olympic, it was not that easy, but through the the people who support us to make us to be in in such a big occasion, uh, we really appreciate it and. Uh, the talent is there uh, for the athletes around uh, the camps. Since we, we are in Rio, now the, our mind is open. Uh, now we know where we are heading to, and we know that uh, this one is something very important. If some, somebody uh, uh, put it in, in, into practice, uh, someone can, can change his life through the sport. And also, sport is something that bring peace and bring all the people together. It doesn't have uh, discrimination. That's one of the things that we, we really appreciate uh, because being in Olympic is not uh, that easy. And we really appreciate the support from, from all the stakeholders. You made history when you were selected to be one of the 10 athletes walking into Maracana Stadium carrying the Olympic flag at the opening ceremony in Rio 2016. It must have been such an emotional moment as the entire stadium stood up with a standing ovation. All of you overcame incredible hurdles to be at the Rio Olympics. At the time, there were 21 million refugees in the world and IOC President Thomas Bach stated, the Olympic refugee team is a symbol of hope for all refugees in our world. Besides your personal victory, what do you think has been achieved through sports to reach the public, changing hearts and minds around the world in regards to the world refugee situation? Yes, uh, the peace has, has been achieved, you know, uh, because the sport, it brings us together as, uh, as the refugees and the rest of the, of the athletes that we met in Rio, uh, and also uh, the peace uh, was was been uh, seen by the world. The, the sport bring us together as as refugees and the rest of the other, of the other people, uh, which was very important. Uh, we believe that uh, through sport, uh, it it is something special. Uh, because without uh, that sport, maybe we could not meet uh, those uh, such important people that uh, we, we are with them in Rio. And uh, the world could have not, not knew that uh, there is a talent in the refugees camps. Uh, through sport, it, uh, it showed that uh, our talents, now it's, the world saw it and the peace was spread around the world. Uh, that This one is something that uh, I would like to to ask uh, our all the, the the stakeholders who have been supporting the uh, the team. Um, yeah, we know you have been with us, you know, uh, and we I really ask that you continue supporting the team. The talent is there uh, in the in the in the refugees camps. Uh, when when we were in Rio, now the our mind is uh, we. We have seen where we are heading to, and we the people who have been the 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 refugees, uh, young people who have been idling in the camps. Now they have seen that there is uh, an opportunity for 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 us, and now when we if we are going to to continue with the with the support, they have seen where they are going to they are, they are heading to, and I am very sure that uh, we are going to see. More, uh, most, more good, good, uh, good talents uh, around the, the camps, and which will be very important that it will change their life through the sport. Wow, James, your words really got us thinking. Thank you for sharing your experiences with us. Also with us today is a truly remarkable leader in the international sport community, Dr. Chang Wo Chu. Dr. Xu, as the founder of the Taekwondo Humanitarian Foundation, an academic, and a leading figure as the World Taekwondo's president, how is Taekwondo used as an effective tool towards peace? I became president of World Taekwondo in 2004. After the Beijing 2008 Olympic Games, 
I started to think, what could I do to promote peace and create a civilized world? In 2008, I launched the Taekwondo Peace Corps. It was the first global peace movement through Taekwondo of the past 10 years. We serve more than 2,000 young coaches and volunteers in 40 countries around the world to help youth in developing countries and in communities that needed help. It was a movement to promote cross-cultural respect. In 2015, I remembered watching the news about the European migrants crisis two months before, when more than a million migrants and refugees crossed dangerous borders and seas into Europe, I was personally shocked and saddened by their plight. So on September 21st in 2015, 34 years after the UN accepted my father's proposal and established the International Day of Peace, I announced at the UN headquarters in New York that I was going to launch the Taekwondo Humanitarian Foundation. That was the birth of Taekwondo's second global peace movement. Our first and flagship project was to construct a humanitarian Taekwondo center in Azra, Jordan, with a field of the middle of the desert for the children to learn and grow. We covered the cost of the coach who trained refugee children for four times a week. We also implemented education programs to teach the refugee children about the values of Olympism and peace. I'm very proud to share with you that as of today, we have 15 children who are now black belt holders. Even one of them is now on the Olympic scholarship training for the Tokyo Olympic Games next year. The third global peace movement of World Taekwondo is our Taekwondo Cares Sport for develop, Development Program. We focus on integrating juvenile youth, orphans, and reformatory inmates back into society. Just in the past two years alone, the Taekwondo Cares Program has helped our member national associations through more than 3.5 million US dollars worth of financial and equipment support, including the recovery efforts in Beirut from the recent blast. We are also engaged with the peace in the Korean Peninsula through joint meetings and Taekwondo demonstrations with the North Korea-led International Taekwondo Federation. We hope that such efforts will help the respective governments come together for a peaceful resolution in the Korean Peninsula and in the East Asia. There are many more instances. Taekwondo was the first combat sports in the Olympic Games to allow the wearing the hijab under our headgear in 2008. At the Rio 2016 Olympic Games, Taekwondo was the only sport to send equal number of male and female international referees. Last year, World Taekwondo was one of the first international sports federation to sign the UN Sports for Climate Action Framework and we were recognized by the International Olympic Committee for taking concrete action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in our World Championships. Finally, World Taekwondo is also actively contributing to the Sustainable Development Goals, especially in SDG 3 on good health and well-being 
SDG 5 on gender equality, SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth, SDG 10 on reducing inequalities, SDG 11 on sustainable cities and committees, SDG 13 on climate action, and SDG 17 on partnerships for goals. As you can see, I believe that we have maximized the global appeal of Taekwondo to contribute effectively to peace. Thank you for inspiring us with these wonderful programs Taekwondo is doing. Dr. Xu, you come from a long line of inspiring family traditions. It was your father in 1981 who successfully proposed that the 36th UN General Assembly should recognize September 21st as the International Day of Peace. What do you feel are the most important values towards peace promotion? My father envisioned Korea to be a global leader in peace and education. Peace is more precious than triumph, is a motto, way of leading that was passed down from my late father to me from one generation to another, and hopefully for many generations to come. Every day, we read about social issues and conflicts. Some of us live through it. It is difficult to think about peace when we go through such challenges in life. But I remember the words of the Bishop of Rome, Pope Francis, he said that we are born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is a good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. As a sports leader, I believe that sports has a powerful role to play in addressing global social issues. Through Taekwondo, we promote values such as inclusiveness, respect, tolerance, courtesy, and integrity. On the mat, we are competitors, but we play fair. Off the mat, we are friends. This is what peace is more precious than triumph is about. But achieving peace is not just for World Taekwondo but it is a responsibility for every international sports federation in the Olympic and Paralympic family. In April 2018, I asked the other international sports federations to join us in the Taekwondo Humanitarian Foundation and develop joint education programs. Today, we have signed memorandums of understanding with nine Olympic and non-Olympic sports. Wrestling, table tennis, badminton, judo, hockey, baseball and softball, Muay Thai, sambo, and power boating. I hope that more IFs can sign up. The involvement of governments is also crucial. In November 2018, the Taekwondo Humanitarian Foundation was invited to present at the first Paris Peace Forum. We were one of only two sports to be invited to present in front of the 65 heads of states and more than 10,000 visitors. These platforms help to elevate the work that we are do for peace through sports. Just as importantly, we should all believe in achieving peace through sport. It is an attitude to change the world. I end with a motto from a book I wrote many years ago, Peace in Mind, Sport at Heart. Thank you, Dr. Xu, for reminding us of what is truly important in life. I am pleased to now welcome Mr. Marius Visser. Mr. Visser, like Dr. Shu, you're one of the world's leaders in martial arts 
as the president of the International Judo Federation. We all understand that the Judo for Peace philosophy goes well beyond practicing a physical activity. How, in your words, would you describe the Judo for Peace philosophy? The IGF Judo for Peace program was created in 2007 with the goal of promoting peace and mutual respect throughout the world. The Judo for Peace philosophy is based on the values of the Judo Moral Code and on the motto Mutual Aid and Welfare, Jita Kiyoi. It is our strong belief that beyond performance, sport is a strong tool for building better societies and for conflict resolution. As a martial art and Olympic sport, Judo leads the way in terms of education and support for social development and through a specific conflict resolution approach, trauma and social issues are addressed to help people to live together. Judo for Peace is active in conflict areas, post-conflict zone and places with social disorders and we have projects running in refugee camps as well as other conflict areas. To name a few, Turkey, Kilis Refugee Camp, in Zambia, Meheba Refugee Settlement, Malawi, Zaleka Refugee Camp, and South Africa, Judo for Peace South Africa, the Great Lake region of Africa, Burundi, Rwanda, Eastern Congo, Georgian, Zaatari Refugee Camp, Ethiopia Refugee Program, Argentina, Terra del Fuego, Canada, Inuit Communities, Mongolia, Isolated Communities, Brazil, Favelas, Afghanistan, in cooperation with Norwegian Olympic Committee. During all the activities, specific Judo for Peace strategies implemented as part of the Global Development Plan for National Federations. The refugee activities focus on the young generation, fostering self-confidence, trauma identification and integration within the local communities. Judo for Peace activity uh, collaborates with other IGF educational activities such as Judo for Children, Judo in School or Gender Equity, and Judo Champions are actively involved on the field. For many years, the IGF has been collaborating with international organizations like Peace and Sport, Crans Montana Forum, Norwegian Olympic Committee, and Norwegian Development Agency to reinforce the Judo for Peace activities and a close collaboration with United Nations has been developed to create better conditions for people in need. Thank you for sharing the vision and mission of Judo for Peace. Mr. Visser, to all the youth watching this event and this panel focused on promoting peace, what is your message to the youth of today? My message for the youth connected to this event, which is valid for all youth of the world, is very simple. Sport will keep you healthy in your body and mind as well. It will prove to be an irreplaceable tool for you to be a better citizen and to make a difference in the society you live in. We are all currently going to a difficult period. The world is turned by conflicts and issues which are dividing entire nations. Young athletes are used to hard work and discipline. For example, Judo is a sport that teaches you respect, resilience, friendship, mutual aid. These are qualities that give you a good moral standing and a strong foundation for your future life. In Judo, as in all combat sports, you have an opponent. But through Judo, your opponent also becomes your friend, a person you respect, you cherish, and you cooperate with. And this is the power of Judo, the power of sport, to transpose in real life the invaluable teaching means to be a model citizen, well integrated in society, and well connected to the world we live in. Humanity can only progress if people of this world live in harmony and cooperation. Mr. Vizer, we couldn't agree more with you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Dear friends, today this panel touched on the role of sports towards peace promotion. 
what is being done, and what we could do. Thank you to Dr. Mohanid, Dr. Shu, Marius, and James. Of course, a special thanks to Julia for guiding and supporting us. May we all continue to be united through sports.